Today I'm at a verb for keeping warm with the owner Christine who is a natural dyer and she's going to show me how she dyed the um, indigo yarn that we used in the oxidized pattern. Hi Christine. Hi. We're going to talk about indigo today and um, this is what an indigo plant looks like. It's technically a legume and the blue, the indigo tin, is actually in the leaf. It's not super easy to see, but that's where you would extract the blue from. And then we're gonna go over to the dye pots and look at it in action. So over here now what we have is the indigo pot um, and a skein of yarn. And what I've done is I have pre-mixed the indigo using this jar. And I take the powdered extract of natural indigo and I add um, two ingredients. I add lye, which affects the alkalinity. We want a very alkaline pot. And I add sodium, sodium hydrosulfate, which eats the oxygen. And indigo is unusual that um, we need to do what's called a reduction process, which means we need to take the oxygen out of the pot um, in order for the indigo to attach to the yarn and be light fast. Um, so I've done that, and then I've poured part of that into this pot, and I've slightly heated it. And the pot's right now gone from blue to yellow, yellowish green, and that's how I know it's ready to dye. So when we put this skein in, we can see as we break the surface of the pot, the green underneath, we dip it very slowly, just one dip in, not anything up and down, because we don't want to introduce any more oxygen than we have to and then we just sit it over the side here and we'll watch it turn from green to blue. So you just rotate it to make the color even? Yeah. And then after it sits in here for about four minutes or so, I'll rotate it again so that this top part goes back under. Mm -hmm. For some dye recipes it's nice because I don't rotate it, and then that way when I over dye it, there's slightly two different colors from that on the bottom than that on the top. So this seems like kind of an elaborate process. So why do you bother with indigo? Oh goodness, this indigo is a really ancient practice, and I love the fact that we're able to continue it here. And the color blue is, you can't really get that special blue through any other process of dyeing, so yeah. So green. Yes, isn't it? People ask a lot, well, oh, what if I wanted to stay that color? And nope. <laughs> you <laughs> have to combine it with yellow. Yeah, in order to make it stay. So to get green, you would use a dye that would give you yellow first and then over dye it? Or? Yeah, it's kind of interesting. If you dye it first yellow and then over dye it with blue, you'll mm -hmm. get a different green than if you dye it first blue and then over dye it yellow. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. That would go with any of the, if you want to do pink or red mm -hmm. or orange, you'd get two different shades, which is kind of cool. So why do you have two pots going? Um, because um, what happens is, so as you dip, you introduce oxygen, and so the pot becomes reoxygenated. So um, I need to recalibrate them, which okay. means adding more soda ash, which will make it again alkaline, and sometimes more sodium hydrosulfate. Um, so that's what happens. And then also, as you dip, you know you're losing water. As much as we try to keep the indigo dye in here, some does seep out, and so um, I take one of my wash baths, which is here and I have to refill it and recalibrate it. Uh, so you kind of have one pot you're u dying with and one that you're reconfiguring at the yeah, same time? Yeah, sometimes we dye them both uh -huh. off of that, and then one will um, need to be replenished faster than another, mm -hmm. so then we start trading off. It almost seems like kind of keeping something living happy. Yes, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's, it's kind of like, Yes, it's like cooking with a few different dishes at, at once. Okay, so now the skeins have been in the pot long enough, so I'm trying to take them out of the pot and see how it's going from green to blue. And as it sits out in the air, an oxygen
oxygen continues to hit the yarn, it'll continue to get darker and darker, like you see here. So it is oxidizing then? Yep, it's oxidizing as we stand here. You can see where little parts haven't been in contact with the air, so they're still green, but as they hit the air, they will turn blue. And so now that we just took a bunch of skeins out, I'm gonna add a little bit of soda ash, and then turn up the heat and let it dissolve. Okay. Yeah. Awesome.